In this video, we will learn how to obtain phenyluria and diphenyluria using the same process. Phenyluria belongs to the group of herbicides. They are substances that destroy and control the growth of undesirable plants. Some of its derivatives are duron, linuron, and monuron, which are used as selective herbicides for asparagus, artichoke, and cotton. Derivatives of diphenyluria are used as synthetic hormones called cytokines, such as thidiazuron, which are used to eliminate the leaves of the cotton plant and facilitate its harvesting. They also encourage flower growth. If you like the video, put a like and subscribe. To obtain phenyluria and definyluria, aniline and hydrochloride must first be obtained and reacted with urea. In the reaction, phenyluria is formed first, and part of the phenyluria reacts with one mole of aniline hydrochloride to form diphenyluria, with diphenyluria being the one that is isolated first because it is insoluble in hot water. To operate, we will put in a 250 milliliters flask equipped with a reflux condenser. 18 grams of aniline, 100 milliliters of water, and 15 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. After 30 minutes, stir the mixture until the aniline completely dissolves, producing its hydrochloride. Add 13 grams of urea after the hydrochloride is formed. Boil at reflux for 2 hours. The initial crystals of diphenyluria appear after 30 minutes of boiling. After 2 hours of boiling, shut off the heat and gather the crystals that formed in hot. Rinse the crystals twice using 10 milliliters of boiling water. The liquid that has been filtered with the two washes is permitted to cool. Once the filtrate is cold, the fine needles of phenyluria crystallize. Gather the crystals and wash them using cold water. The liquid washing is discarded. The filtered liquid is heated again at reflux for an hour and a half to obtain a second harvest using the same process. Another harvest of diphenyluria and another of phenyluria have been obtained. To obtain the last crop of crystals, we repeat the operation and evaporate the filtrate to half its volume. Our next task is to purify the phenylurias that were obtained by crystallization. To purify diphenyluria, it is crystallized from ethanol and decolorized with activated charcoal. The impure diphenyluria yielded 3.1 grams. We dilute it with 120 milliliters of ethanol and add 2 grams of activated charcoal. Boil at reflux for an hour. Filter the carbon hot to separate it. Allow it to cool until it becomes crystallized. Fine needle-shaped crystals are obtained. Collect the initial harvest. To obtain a second harvest, evaporate half of the ethanol. All the obtained products are dried in an oven at 60 degrees. Crystallization resulted in the production of 1.56 grams of diphenyluria. The yield was 3.8% depending on the aniline used. We determine purity using the melting point. The temperature measured between 238 and 242 degrees. The melting point of diphenyluria is between 239 and 241 degrees. Our next task is to purify phenyluria. The phenyluria we obtain will be purified by diluting it in hot water with bleaching charcoal. We put the phenyluria obtained in a 250 milliliters glass and add 1 gram of bleaching charcoal. Heat the charcoal with a minimum amount of water until it completely dissolves. We filter hot with filter paper, and then wash the filter with several portions of boiling water to dilute the phenyluria that remains crystallized.
it is heated again to boiling point and first a white precipitate forms. The precipitate is filtered quickly and we let it cool. Allow it to rest for a duration of 6 to 12 hours. The crystals are collected by suction and dried in an oven at 60 degrees for 12 hours. Crystals white needles were obtained. Our objective is to determine the melting point, which must be within the range of 143 and 149 degrees. In our test, a value of 140 to 148 degrees was obtained, which was a fairly pure product. A yield of 24% was achieved for 6.4 grams of phenoluria in relation to aniline.